Well, good afternoon, everyone. I wanted to take an opportunity to officially welcome you to today's webinar, going over how to develop your marketing calendar. Excited to uh, be on the call with you today. We've got a couple minutes before 1 o'clock here, so we're going to let a few more people trickle in. Um, we are. I am using a new headset today. Um, some of you who were on our webinars uh, previously had talked about some audio problems, so excited to be using a new headset with you all today. If you do have any audio problems throughout the call today, I would encourage you to take advantage of the chat panel, which you'll find uh, in your GoToMeeting access area. Send me a message if you're having any audio problems, and I'll do my best to try to troubleshoot those for you while keeping the webinar moving forward for everyone else. Um, but uh, hopefully uh, things will be working for us well today. Also want to encourage you as you are, as we're talking through the webinar a little bit today, we're going to really dive into the content for about 30 minutes and then we'll have a short Q&A time at the end of the session or as we like to call it a stump the geek time. Um, so as we're walking through things today, take note of any questions you have. Uh, we're going to cover a lot of topics relatively quickly, I'm not going to go deep into any of those topics. Again, the focus being around how do we develop those in our calendar uh, from a marketing perspective. Uh, but take note of any questions you have, and at the end we'll have five or ten minutes to address those questions. Um, and you can submit those questions to us via our chat panel. So again, if you don't know where the chat panel is, um, we'll show you a little bit later on in the webinar, but it's in your GoToMeeting control. Um, it may have a plus symbol next to it and say chat. If it does, click that plus symbol. It will expand into, um, into the chat area where you can send a message uh, directly to me in that area. So there's also a welcome message there already from me. So when you see that welcome message, you'll know you're in the right spot. Awesome. Well, it is 1 o'clock, and we promised to kick things off on time. So we'll see a few people trickling in here, but I want to go ahead and get things kicked off. Obviously, the reason we're all here today, how to develop your marketing calendar, specifically uh, looking at 2013. It's a great time to be talking about marketing calendars, and we've found the real motivation behind this was a lot of questions we were receiving from our colleagues and clients uh, around, can we get a calendar or something to kind of hold ourselves accountable to what we've committed to from a marketing perspective. Uh, we have calendars in place that we work with for our clients, so we decided to share a lot of those resources with you all on the call today. And as we promised in the email we sent out, we are going to send everyone who's on the call with us today um, a copy of the, uh, the Excel spreadsheets and calendars that we use. Uh, there will be some of our client data in there to kind of get you off on the right foot and give you some ideas to start things. Uh, and then you can just replace that client data with your data and get things off and running. First thing we want to cover today, and several of you have seen messages uh, similar to this, uh, we just did a, uh, a big campaign for a conference we're going to be at next week, and some of you I know are joining us from that campaign today, so welcome. Um, but we want to really drive home the fact that marketing doesn't have to be complicated. We've kind of adopted this visual of the Atlas Shrugged. You see it used on our website throughout several of our other marketing materials. But really today we want to demystify, we want to simplify some of the, the marketing. We want to get away from buzzwords and look at how do we apply some of the internet marketing methodology. Um, that's being used in the web and, and how do we apply that successfully, of course wrapped around the idea of how do we do that uh, in, a, in a calendar capacity so that we have some commitments we're following up on on a monthly basis. And then of course we encourage you all with that calendar in place to develop some accountability uh, either with someone else on your staff, someone else on your team, or maybe an outside business mentor, uh, consultant, something along those lines. But that accountability uh, paired with the, the calendar will demystify a lot of that and really help you hopefully take things to the next level. So I wanted to share that little graphic. It's one that uh, that we really like and, and get a lot of good feedback on. So again, we're going to be moving pretty quick today, but just want to dive in. Today's agenda, we're going to be covering uh, blogging, how that works into your calendar, uh, lead generation offers, email marketing. We're going to be talking about how you measure everything, and I'm going to hit on social media a little bit as well, as opposed to our agenda uh, that could be, and what sometimes the agenda is, chaos, more chaos, and did I mention chaos? So we'll try to have a little bit of fun along the way, but uh, get down to serious business as well. So I'm going to skip straight to number five and hit on social media. We're not going to talk a lot about social media today, specifically because social media should part, be a part of every day's calendar. And we don't have a calendar with 365 lines in it to send to you uh, to address your social media efforts. A lot of these are going to incorporate with your social media. 
but we're not going to spend a lot of time on it because of that. It's a daily activity we should really, we would really encourage you to participate in. Um, we do have some other webinars where we dive in depth into social media that I'd be happy to send you a recording on. You can find those on our YouTube channel at Q4 Launch as well. I would encourage you to check those out. And of course, these other, these other areas we're going to be touching on briefly, we all have webinars for those that are diving more in depth. So if you're interested in any of those more in depth webinars, be happy to uh, connect you with those. Just shoot me an email uh, after the webinars over today, uh, which is matt, M-A-T-T, at q4launch.com, which you all have because you've received email from me to get to this webinar today. So just reply to that, and we'll get you hooked up. But let's dive into blogging. Um, we're going to kind of walk through this in a step-by-step -step process. Again, going pretty quick, not going real in-depth. Um, but the key here is that blogging starts with keyword research. Um, we've shared a little bit of a snippet here, an example of one of our clients. Um, but really want to encourage you, don't just blog for the sake of blogging. Don't just blog about random topics. Um, but when you're looking at your blogging and you're developing your calendar, really focus on keyword research. You can do this um, based on keywords that you're currently ranking for, as in this example, and that you want to be ranked higher for. So these keywords, ex with the exception of the last one there, were all off the first page for our client, and they were keywords they wanted to be on the first page for. So we incorporated those into our blogging calendar for them. And then you can see here, uh, we create a space for what, what blog one are we going to write, what blog two are we going to write. There was a blog three, but it wouldn't fit and still be readable on this screen for you. So uh, we'll share that with you as well in, in the, the Excel spreadsheet, I promise, that actual calendar document. And of course, this goes much longer. We're not recommending just focusing on four keywords either. Uh, we're trying to keep it uh, manageable for you. Uh, you can do keyword research on Google's AdWords tools. There's actually a keyword tool in there. They're making that harder and harder for people. Um, the other way you can do it, if you're not familiar with keyword research and how to really execute that, uh, is to just think about the types of things that your customers are asking Google when they're looking for your services. What common questions do you get from customers? Uh, and how do they phrase those in, in their Google searches? By focusing on that, you're basically doing keyword research without the supporting data behind it. Um, but it's a really easy, quick way to jumpstart your blog calendar and focusing it on keywords. That's the key, because if you're focusing on keywords, those blogs are going to help you get ranked. They're going to help you get more traffic. If you're just blogging about what you drank at Starbucks this morning, nobody really cares, and no one's necessarily going to come to your website to read about what you, what you drank at Starbucks this morning. Um, so we're talking about specific blogs written with a specific keyword in mind. Step two, obviously, is then turn your keyword research into blog titles. So you'll see here a couple quick examples that we put together this morning. Um, on how to turn these keywords in the left column into actual blog titles in the right column. Uh, these are not actual examples uh, for a client, um, but we just wanted to throw these together for you as a way to kind of walk through what that keyword or that blog title would look like and how that might work in a uh, in, in turn that keyword into a blog title. So give you all a second to review those. Uh, of course, we're going to send you slides from today as well, so you'll be able to review that in a little bit more depth and answer questions. All right, step three is really creating and committing to your blog calendar. Um, and I want to pull in a resource that wouldn't fit on this screen, so bear with me for just a sec while I pull this over from another monitor here. Um, but this is what we're talking about with the blog calendar. This is a calendar we developed for our client of ours called Infuse. They focus on employee benefit programs. Um, and you can kind of see where we've, where we've gone from here. I'm going to spend a little bit more time here than we have on some of the other slides to really dive in. Um, you'll see on this tab here, we did our keyword research using Google's keyword tool. Uh, keywords in the left column. Uh, Google's keyword tool provides you a competitive score uh, from 0 to 1. Uh, and that's all listed here. And then local monthly searches are listed here. Again, this is all data provided to us by Google. Uh, to clarify local monthly searches, that means United States-based searches. So I know uh, there's a few people on the call joining us from Canada today, so don't mean to be, not, be biased against you all, but we're going to be focused on the U.S.-based search today. Um, but that local isn't local in the sense of your local city. It's local in the sense of United States because Google really has a global view on things. And what we have found uh, in the research we've done, um, the, I'd say at this point, thousands of blogs we've written for our clients on their behalf, 
um, that we we can get a client's blog or website ranked for a specific keyword if it has a competitive score of 0.4 or below, typically with one blog post that's written well and according to blogging and SEO best practices. Um, SEO being search engine optimization. So again, competitive score, we want to focus on 0.4 or below. If there's an, a really strong keyword they want to go after that's higher than that, uh, definitely can be done. It's just going to require a little bit more work, two or three blogs, as well as maybe some off-site search engine optimization. But would really encourage you all as you're getting started in this, if blogging is something new to you, to really pick out and focus on keywords with a competitive score of 0.4 and below. So we see the keyword research here. We see the competition score, the local monthly searches, and we work with our clients to turn that into a blog calendar. We do these quarterly for clients, so I know we're talking about the year as a whole, what would that look like, but let's back that down to something a little bit more manageable for you and, uh, and look at what, the, what this next quarter would look like for you. So for them, we're writing five blog posts a month. We recommend a minimum of five blog posts a month for our clients. Um, if, uh, if, you're just, if you love content creation, you love writing, um, the more the merrier. Uh, we have some colleagues um, that we follow in the marketing space that they blog about 30 times a month and they're ranked for a ton of keywords as a result of that. Um, but we know that that's pretty burdensome for a business to try to do on their own uh, and pretty expensive for them to try to hire somebody to do for them. So five is kind of a good medium. We wouldn't really do less than that. You can do more than that depending on how aggressive you want to get with your uh, marketing strategy and how much you're trying to grow traffic. But you'll see our keyword here in this column, the keyword that we're focused on, uh, the competitive score that we brought over from our keyword research, the local traffic volume, also brought over from our keyword research, and this impacts the decisions we're making on which keywords we target. Because obviously we don't necessarily want to spend a lot of time targeting keywords that don't have any traffic. Uh, unfortunately, we see a lot of people in the space um, selling search engine optimization or selling services like this, and they're going after keywords that have zero space so that they can show you they got you ranked quickly and easily. It isn't that wonderful, but um, and we'll talk about this more in the measure everything side of things. Um, if there's not the uh, volume there to drive traffic to your website, there really isn't a lot of value for you in it. Um, and then here you'll see the blog titles as well. Uh, probably better examples than the ones that I shared earlier um, as far as matching a keyword with a blog title. So employee discount program, uh, blog title was starting an employee discount program 101. The closer those keywords are to each other in your blog title, uh, being keyword proximity, um, the more likely you are to appear for those. Um, hopefully your blog is set up so that it, uh, that it may match, makes your blog title uh, the, he the H1 or the heading 1 on your page, uh, as well as the page title, uh, which gets into a little bit more in depth, which we can talk through um, and offline with anybody if that if that doesn't uh, ring a bell for you there. But uh, hopefully your blog, in order to develop your site, set it up in a way that does that. Because uh, it's really going to maximize the benefit of writing these blogs. Um, so I'll give you all a second to look at this. Again, this is going to be included in the Excel spreadsheet we sent when we follow up today. So we won't spend a ton of time here. And we will uh, we will move on. We would encourage you all, I know we just covered a, a blogging topic that we've spent hours and hours discussing on previous webinars in about 10 minutes. So uh, if you have blogging questions, feel free to save those for the end uh, or email me afterwards and follow up. Uh, step four in the blogging process, and this is everybody's favorite step, is watch your keywords get ranked. Uh, so this is an actual client example of ours. Um, they were uh, We targeted this keyword in November. Uh, we wrote a couple blog posts about it. The latest one was on November 20th. Um, and pretty much overnight, um, they went from ranking around 50th to uh, ranking 5th for that keyword. So by writing the blog post, targeting the keyword that we were going after, and following our SEO and, and on-page blogging best practices, we drove this client's ranking um, from 50th to 5th with a couple of targeted blog posts. Uh, to put that into perspective for you, they're getting about 200 visits a month just from that keyword. Um, since this blog post, obviously when they were ranked 50th, they weren't getting really any traffic because nobody goes to the 50th search result to find who out, who's there. Um, but since then, they, they're getting about 200 visits to their website. Um, and uh, those visits from a pay-per-click perspective uh, are worth about $2 a click. 
Uh, hopefully everyone's familiar with, with pay-per-click, but uh, 200 visits times $2 a click, that has a monthly value of about $400 for this particular client. Multiply that out over the course of the year, assuming we stay ranked here, um, and that, that those couple blogs we wrote have a value of about $4,800 just in, in actual expense that they would have had to bear to, to get that traffic otherwise. Uh, the return on that investment from a leads and bookings perspective is yet to be seen. Uh, is that really just clicked in at the beginning of December. I already have several leads that have come through, but uh, we'll be looking for more data on that as the year goes on. Um, and as such, we also recommend that you keep an eye with a keyword tracking tool on these keywords that you're going after. You can also do this in Google Webmaster Tools if you're set up with that. Um, but this enables you to watch your ranking on a relatively regular basis. Uh, if you're doing this yourself and you're kind of working it into all the other business stuff that you have to do on a daily basis. Uh, we understand that might be a monthly thing. If you're a little bit more aggressive, if you're the marketing person for a company or if you have a good marketing agency working for you, that should be happening on a weekly or bi-weekly basis. And if you see your ranking slip, that's a great chance to write another blog post to hopefully boost you back up those rankings. The next thing we're going to dive into is lead generation offers, which uh, we did a really dedicated webinar on. Uh, about a month and a half ago, which I uh, would really encourage you all to check out on our YouTube channel. Um, but talking about lead generation offers is something that most people aren't necessarily familiar with. Uh, and 99% of websites, e-commerce websites excluded, obviously, um, but 99% of websites out there are brochures. You know, People put them online to share some information about themselves or their company, and they have zero functionality from a lead generation perspective. And we believe it's very difficult to quantify the value of such a website. So we encourage our clients, and actually this is what we do for our clients, or a big part of that, is to turn your website into a lead generating machine. Um, and we do that with lead generation offers to convert the traffic into leads. You see a little bit of a, uh, an excerpt from an infographic that we have um, all around the proven process of converting traffic into leads. Um, but on your site, you build landing pages that describe the offer with a form to collect lead information. Um, that lead information should uh, correspond to um, uh, what you're giving away. So the more value what, that you're giving away, the more you can ask for in lead information. So if you're giving away a free two-night stay at uh, your vacation rental company, you can ask for a lot of information in return for that. Uh, if you're giving someone your email newsletter, you probably can't ask for quite as much just for them to get your free email newsletter. Um, so as you're thinking through what those lead offers might be for you, um, think about that and the fact that the, the more valuable the content you're giving away, the more you can ask for in exchange. Um, but we encourage our clients uh, and we work with them to really split test this as well. So you may have a form that has five form fields on it and by reducing those to three form fields you may see um, your traffic dramatically increase. You may have something that has three on it, but you really feel like by adding another form field, those leads would be a lot more valuable to you. Uh, and you could add that fourth field. You could split test that offer. And as long as your conversion rate doesn't dip, you can really uh, get that going and, and get a lot more qualified leads that way. Um, but then once you have the landing pages in place, you put a call to action on your website. This could be something along the lines uh, on our website. Uh, this webinar, for example, is a call to action on our website part of our lead generation process and the way we add value to the community in which we serve. Um, you'll see several others on there regarding search engine optimization and social media. And we share a lot of white papers, things like that. Uh, we have a client uh, that gives away a North Middle Beach vacation guide, gets a ton of leads off their North Middle Beach vacation guide. Uh, we have several other people in the hospitality industry that do similar things. Um, and we see a lot of traffic and conversion there. Um, you know your industry, you know the types of questions that your, your clients have, and I really encourage you to spend some time brainstorming those to develop what the uh, offers might be for your site. Um, and then, you know, working with people to, to determine uh, compelling calls to action on those offers. Step three in this process is developing the offers for different levels of the sales funnel. And that's really why we're talking about it today, because we want to talk about how it fits into your overall marketing calendar. Uh, we really encourage you, depending on how many products it is that you're trying to sell, how big of a business it is that you're working with or for, uh, that you would do this at least quarterly. Uh, the advantages of that are you can develop more specific offers uh, to different people at different points in the sales cycle. 
um, but you can also uh, start split testing some of those offers um, so that uh, you get higher conversion on those. Uh, you know, you'd be surprised sometimes what offers convert higher than others. Uh, the reason we have uh, search engine optimization and social media on the front page of our website was that about a year ago those were the hottest topics uh, trending, so we made the move to put those up front on the front page of our site, and they've continued to outperform other offers that we had in that place. So uh, by having multiple offers running, you start to see which ones are really piquing people's interest and in getting you the highest conversion, and then you move those highest converting offers to the highest traffic places on your site to get as much conversion and as much lead generation as possible. Um, talking real quickly through the sales cycle, um, there's a uh, basically four levels of buyers. Um, there's the unaware buyer, the interested buyer, the problem recognized, and the ready to buy. Uh, the majority of companies address the ready to buy buyer. Either they have a book now, or they have a call us today, or something like that. Um, but very few companies address these other three groups of buyers. Um, and specifically in the travel industry, there's almost uh, no addressing of these other groups of buyers and we can talk more about that um, but uh, the, the booking process or the vacation process in the travel industry is actually a four-step process uh, the majority 99% um, of people address um, one of those four steps and ignore the other three and I would bet that based on uh, everyone on the call today that we're probably in similar places even though we may not be in the travel industry or we may be in the travel industry um, we're probably ignoring uh, these are phases of the buying cycle so there's a few types of offers there that people might uh, respond to on the right-hand side that I'll, hopefully you all can read. Um, but uh, blog articles, uh, web uh, banners, PR articles, all great ways to capture unaware buyers. Educational offers um, being ebooks, white papers, independent articles, introductory videos, great way to capture interested buyers. And then validation offers, webinars, podcasts, seminars, brochures, uh, sell sheets. Uh, great problem recognized options. Uh, some of those would fall into the interested buyer as well. If they're interested in a particular topic and will join you. But uh, the key here is no matter what process or what part of the sales funnel somebody's in, you want to have opportunities to capture them. Um, and we'll share a document that we'll share with you here in just a minute on how to incorporate these into your marketing calendar. But again, our focus with these is do these at least quarterly. If you're marketing a lot more services or a lot more products, uh, you, know, you can do these monthly as well. Um, and then the next step here is commit to one new offer per quarter. Uh, this might be a little small and hard to read, um, but basically the, uh, the different sections here are what, you know, the first one on the far left, what product or service are we addressing with our offer? And then developing an offer for the top, middle, and bottom of the funnel for that product or service. And then a space to write in your offer name. What's the offer going to be? Is it going to be a vacation guide? Is it going to be a free 30-minute consultation? Is it going to be um, joining our email newsletter? You know, email newsletter might be top of the funnel. Middle of the funnel might be the vacation guide uh, or similar offer for your industry. Bottom of the funnel might be that free consultation. Um, then the call to action. So you can document that right here in this, uh, your landing page URL. Um, and then timing days apart, that, uh, that references uh, if they convert at one level, how many days until you prompt them to convert at the next level. So if they convert at top of the funnel, how many days until you prompt them to convert at middle of the funnel. And then the last column over there is your accountability column. It's did you do it? Are you done? Yes or no? Um, and you can fill that out. You can obviously tweak this, manipulate it for products or services, multiple ones per, per quarter. Um, or you know, work with it however you need to to make it work for your needs and again we'll send you that and we'll copy of that. The last step in the lead generation offers process is watch the leads flock in. So this is another live example of one of our actual clients. Uh, December is a rather slow month for them. Uh, January starts the process of things starting to pick up uh, and we pulled an updated screenshot today. Uh, they generated 151 leads uh, this month to date. Uh, through their website, generated a lot of bookings as well, but specifically looking at the leads here um, on those lead generation offers that are throughout their site. Uh, the next step we talk about in your marketing calendar, so you're writing your five blogs a month, you're developing your one lead generation offer per quarter, um, and now we're going to talk about email marketing. We encourage our clients to do this at least twice a month. 
um, because we've seen statistics prove time and time again uh, frequency equals success. Uh, I, we get a lot of questions from people, well, how much, how, how, many, how much frequency is good frequency? That's a tough question to answer. You've got to watch your own list and watch your own statistics to really be able to say. Um, but the top, some of the top brands email every day. Uh, and while there is a certain unsubscribe rate associated with that, uh, it does really do a good job keeping them top of mind. Obviously, that's a lot of work. Um, a lot for the, the small businesses that we typically work with, but two a month uh, should be really manageable uh, for you all. Uh, it blows my mind. We've done a ton of analytics reviews with uh, our analytics audits with prospective clients, and every time we do an audit, we always see a spike or two in traffic, and it's you know a significant spike in traffic, maybe a 40%, 50% increase one day. And I would say, hey, Joe, what happened this day that your traffic spiked 40%? And he thinks a minute, thinks a minute, he says, oh, I think I sent out an email blast that day. And I say, and you did that twice this year. Uh, he's like, yeah. I was like, well, look at your traffic with me, Joe. Do you think that's a good use of your time? Every time you do it, it spikes for you. Um, so it's a great way to drive traffic. Unfortunately, when a business owner, if, if you're you know, kind of a one-man band or you're busy doing other responsibilities for the business you work for, human marketing, for whatever reason, seems to fall by the wayside a lot of times and not get done. But it's a uh, it's a proven way to generate return on your investment that really drives uh, quality traffic to you. So a few things we want to hit on on the email marketing topic uh, besides the do it twice a month and commit to it uh, is develop a branded email template. Even if people don't read your message, they're still going to see your brand. They're going to see that they got an email from you and it's going to keep you top of mind. So we talk about open rates. We talk about click-through rates. Those are all important. But more than anything, we just want to stay top of mind with your database. So that if uh, your product or service comes up in conversation, that they've seen your name recently and you're the first person to come uh, to the top of their mind. And that will get you that referral uh, more times than not. So really develop that branded email template. Drive home your branding and stay top of mind. Uh, the next step and what we encourage our clients to do is stick to one main focus or offer per blast. Um, so in this example, you'll see the uh, call to action here was 20% off through the end of April. Um, and we really drove that message home using a strong headline for it. Um, talked about reasons that you need to come during this period for this client. Um, and really focused on that offer. We didn't surround that offer with a lot of clutter, a lot of noise, because if we had, it would get lost. Uh, and if it gets lost, you're not going to get the click-throughs, you're not going to get the, uh, the bookings that this client wants. And however you define success for you, for them it's booking. So you really need to focus on what that one offer, what that main focus is going to be. Uh, step three is include an obvious call to action. So we've got the main offer, 20% off through the end of April, and if you follow that line of sight as you're reading it, just out to your right, search availability. That's our obvious call to action. Uh, that's what we want people to do. The phone number obviously is up above there as well, so if they're more of a phone oriented client, We've got that right in front of them so they can quickly call us. Um, and we've got the search availability call to action. Uh, obviously, this is a screenshot, but in the email template, that's a live link that links through to their website. That can all be tracked. And, uh, and then you can see what kind of bookings you're getting from your search availability link. Um, or if you're not in the booking industry, whatever you define success as, you can track that with your email marketing software. Or your marketing agency should track that for you. If you're actively marketing a particular product or service with your email blast. Uh, and then step four, we talked about work into your marketing calendar and commit to one or two consistent email blasts per month. Really want to encourage two uh, with different types of content. It doesn't have to be a, a sales offer every time. You can just share a blog post from your blog, for example. It's a way to add value and communicate to your database. Uh, I want to hit on the word consistent as well. Uh, research has proven. Uh, we, uh, we interact with uh, MailChimp a lot um, and get a lot of research from them and some of the data that they push out from the over billion emails that they have had sent through their system at this point. So it's a pretty good sample size. Um, that if you send emails consistently, what I mean by that is two a month, but also consistently on the same day of the month, that people start to just uh, subconsciously expect that content from you. So. As you're working through that, commit to, if you're going to do two, do them on the 1st and the 15th. If you're going to do one, do it on the 15th of the month, or whatever your day is going to be. Maybe it's the first Friday of every month, but commit to a specific day and do that consistently, and people will start to recognize that and start to look for that message from you, 
and your open rates uh, should go up as a result. Uh, the last step we're going to talk through here, um, we're going to spend a little bit of time here, uh, is measure everything. Uh, set aside an hour per month to review your analytics. Uh, this I can't drive this home enough because if you're doing all these other marketing activities but you're not measuring it, you have no idea what's working and you have no motivation to keep doing it. Uh, if you do this for a couple months and you start to see some traction, you start to see traffic increasing, you start to see leads increasing, you start to see sales coming out of that, that's a great motivator. It keeps you excited. It keeps you pushing forward on that. Um, but if you do these things and you don't track them, uh, you don't look at the results, then even if they're working for you, like Joe's email blast I talked about earlier, it worked for him, but he never reviewed his analytics, so he had no idea that it was driving a 40% jump in traffic when he sent out email blasts. Um, and he got discouraged and quit doing it. Um, maybe not discouraged, but you just get busy doing other things. But really, the accountability of reviewing those analytics. Um, you know, I would encourage you to do this in a team environment as well. Um, depending on if you're the business owner or if you work for a company as a marketing director or whatever else, um, you know, sit down with a few members of your team. Uh, do this over lunch, one day a month. Maybe it's the end of the month, beginning of the month. Um, but I uh, really encourage you to do that because it will really help you see the successes. It also helps you identify uh, if something goes bump in the night. You know, if, uh, if you have a lot of traffic coming from a blog, if for whatever reason it ranks, or if it's ranking drops off or traffic drops off and you see that traffic dropping off, um, you know that something's kind of going bump in the night and it, it kind of raises that red flag of, all right, we need to check this out. We need to figure out what's going on here. Um, and then we would also encourage you to look at data year over year to eliminate seasonality. Uh, some of y'all are in more seasonal businesses than others, um, but there's always an element of seasonality to everybody's business. You know, our business isn't super seasonal, um, but from Thanksgiving to Christmas, everybody shuts down on us. <laughs> they uh, returns emails are slower, everything's slower. So look at data year over year to eliminate that seasonality. Uh, if you're looking at uh, December data versus November data, uh, you might start freaking out a little bit because traffic's down, but you know, then you think about seasonality. Oh, it's Christmas. It's hard to say if we're succeeding or not. Is it seasonality? Is it something else causing problems? But if you can look at December over December, uh, year over year, then you really know, okay, what's going on in the marketplace. Uh, we work with a lot of people in the, uh, in the travel and hospitality industry, and this, uh, this Christmas season was an especially tough one. With the fiscal cliff stuff going on with Christmas and New Year's uh, both falling on Tuesdays, it was just a difficult year from a traffic perspective. Um, but uh, looking at the year over year, we knew it wasn't just uh, an isolated thing. We knew that it was happening across the entire industry uh, and that uh, um, the results we were seeing were, were good compared to uh, where we expected some of the other things to be based on, on those uh, elements of that. So I really encourage you all to look year over year to eliminate seasonality. Uh, the next point I want to make, uh, and this is one of the most important points we'll talk about all day. Um, if you're doing, if you're managing your own marketing or if you work with a marketing agency, make sure that you're meeting monthly and that you're asking what your return on investment is. And if they can't tell you, run as fast as you can. Uh, and our belief, our perspective, uh, marketing is an investment in your business. It's not an expense. And as such, it should have a return on that investment that should be track trackable and quantifiable. Um, this is a report that I was going over with a client today. Actually, uh, they are on a 15th through the 14th month with us, and this is their monthly marketing report. So uh, in 2013, so December 15th, 2012, which January 14th, 2013, uh, we increased bookings specifically through the online channels by 46%. Uh, they were generating zero leads in two, before they started working on our system. And this was their first month on our system, by the way. This isn't a, a long-term client. It is a long-term client, but it was their first month with us. Um, we went from zero leads to 57 leads. And in the first 30 days there, eight of those leads converted to bookings for them, which had a value of $4,746. Uh, there's a lot of lines in there, which won't necessarily make sense to you all, but total revenue growth for this client year over year uh, was $9,257. Um, pretty significant. Uh, might seem like a small number to some of the businesses on the call with us today. Uh, might seem like a big number to you as well. I mean, what would an extra ten grand a month in revenue look like for your business? Um, but the key in the last line on that spreadsheet is the return on the marketing investment. 
Um, so what's that? You know, what is your return that you're spending going to look like? And of tracking that and knowing that so that you can really figure out what marketing is working for you and what's not. So really encourage you all, if you're working with an agency currently, to ask that question at your next monthly meeting. Hopefully you do meet monthly. If you don't, I would encourage you to start those monthly meetings as soon as possible um, and ask, what's that ROI look like? I was just at dinner last night with a, uh, a colleague of mine, and uh, I was talking to her and said, hey, what, uh, you know, she was talking about having a brainstorming meeting with a marketing agency today. And she said, what are some, what are some questions I should be asking? Um, and I just said, well, the most important question is this question. What's your return on your investment? She said, well, we've been working with them for two years. They've never talked about that. And I said, well, tomorrow in your meeting, look at them and say, what's, what's been our return on our investment for the last month, for the last year? And if they don't have a response, ask them to get back to you with one. I understand they may not have one on the spot, but they should be able to come up with one um, if you give them a couple days. Uh, and if they can't, you might want to reconsider um, what you're doing from a marketing perspective because you've got to be able to know what's working and what's not. Well, let me skip ahead a slide here. Let me see if I can get back. Um, oftentimes, at the end of these calls, we, we talk about a lot of things, and it's a lot of challenging information. Um, so we always try to provide a next steps opportunity uh, for the people on the call with us. Uh, today, the next step opportunity is going to be uh, requesting one of the free marketing grader reports that we offer um, to our friends and colleagues uh, that we work with, which uh, joining us on the webinar today puts you in that group of friends and colleagues. Uh, what the Marketing Grader Report does is it's a software we have that runs an unbiased uh, look at your internet marketing efforts and it gives you tangible ideas for improvements you can make to impact your marketing pretty much immediately. Some of them are small things, some of them are big things, but it really helps you understand tangibly what can I do to impact my marketing today. Um, it also gives you a score, which is a great place to start because it gives you something you can track along with. Um, the higher you get, the more nitpicky our software gets as well. Um, we had one client who was at a 97 uh, that was working with us, and uh, some of the stuff on there, on the software is kicking back. It was so nitpicky, it was kind of almost unbelievable. Um, but the majority of people we see uh, are in the 40s um, on these scores, so it is a relatively challenging thing. Um, but it's a, something that we offer for free. It gives you some next steps, and then we offer a free 30-minute follow-up call with that to review the report with you and, and talk through the results and give you some tangible ideas of what you can change in your marketing today. It's not a sales call. It's not anything like that. It's just trying to help you um, take the next step in your marketing and identify of the areas we've talked about and a few others that we address on that. What's most important? Where can I get the most bang for my buck right away? Um, so if you are interested in that, um, just send me a, an email with your website address and contact information uh, to matt at q4launch.com. It's on the screen there, uh, but it's also in your email inbox. Um, so just shoot me a response. I will work with you to get those scheduled. I am out of town next week at a conference all week, um, but I will email you back promptly and we'll get that scheduled for the following week. Um, and then the last area we want to get to here is our uh, question and answer time. Um, we are big fans of the Big Bang Theory, so we've got our little Big Bang Theory call out there. Um, we also have a screenshot of what the chat panel looks like. Uh, so you'll see that in your GoToMeeting toolbar. Uh, you can click on that and just enter a question into the chat area if you've been taking notes along the way or any particular questions you want to go over. would be happy to answer those for you. So we'll give you all a few minutes to kind of get those in and we'll start talking through some of those questions. All right, we've got a question regarding um, using your blogs uh, for email content. Um, that's a great question. It's something we encourage our clients to do. Uh, earlier we talked about uh, sending two uh, emails a month out and that that's a great, uh, a great kind of best practice. Uh, with that, one of those can be sales or product focused, uh, some special offer you may be running. Uh, but the other one we often recommend being content focused. So if you're writing five blogs a month, maybe pick a blog that was your, your highest read blog, or um, maybe it's a particular topic that your business is focusing on uh, right now, uh, or something trending in your industry. Uh, take that blog, turn it into a, uh, an email blast, take an excerpt, maybe the first hundred words or so out of that blog, uh, put the blog title as your email subject line, 
send that out to your database. It's a great way to communicate that you're an expert on that topic uh, and to further position you as kind of a go-to resource in your industry for that information. And of course, it also then, uh, by just sharing the first 100 words, if somebody wants to read the rest of the post, you can redirect them back to your website to read the entire post. And then ideally, you'd have call to actions, uh, calls to action on your blog or your website to capture some of that traffic and convert them into leads and drive people to take the next step as well. Great question. Uh, feel free, anybody else who wants to chime in with a question, try to get as many of these answered as we can today. All right, the next question uh, we're going to go through here, uh, specifically looking at, um, we touched on earlier um, during the uh, um, the offer part, you, there was a little blurb up there to kind of put this in context about um, the next steps. You know, if somebody converts at top of the funnel, how do you get them to the middle of the funnel? How do you get them to the bottom of the funnel? Um, the real answer to that uh, is what we call lead nurturing. Um, it's uh, kind of an in-depth subject of all in of itself. Um, but in the uh, document we're going to send you as a follow-up to today's call, there's actually a, a page on that spreadsheet or a, a workbook on that spreadsheet titled lead nurturing. What you want to do there is you want to understand, okay, if someone's at the top of the funnel, what type of content do I need to get to them um, to go to the next level of the funnel, to the middle level of the funnel? If they're at the middle level of the funnel, what type of content do I need to get to them to get them to the bottom of the funnel, to that request a consultation, request a sales call? Um, you can also use that as a way to identify between marketing ready and sales ready leads. You may say that a middle of the funnel or a bottom of the funnel is a sales ready lead, top of the funnel might be a marketing ready lead. Um, you may have legal issues in your industry that um, specifically mandate what you have to do there. We were uh, working with an attorney just last week and he was talking about some of the legal stuff and solicitation of business and well, kind of the resolution we came to with them was if someone requests a white paper or a guide on our website, they're a marketing ready lead, which means we can continue to add value, we can continue to um, push content and blogs to them. All of that, though, in that specific industry has to be designed around getting someone to a place where they, they know, like, and trust us so that we can get them to request a consultation. Uh, in that legal practice, according to this lawyer, unless they request a consultation, they can't really call them or proactively solicit business from them. Once they request a consultation, they're free to do that. So in that space, that's a great example of using lead nurturing to move someone from a top of the funnel, middle of the funnel lead, to a bottom of the funnel lead, requesting that consultation uh, being that last step uh, in that process. And then, of course, now they're a sales ready lead and the attorneys can follow up, make a sales call, uh, and try to close that deal. So hopefully uh, you can apply that kind of information into your industry. Don't remember any lawyers signing up for the call today, um, but uh, would, uh, hopefully that makes sense and can be applied for you as well. Um, we can also share some other resources around lead nurturing. Um, but we recommend that process be automated as much as possible so that as leads come through that you're not having to manually email those leads at, given, at specific given times. Um, so there should really be at least a four, three to four step process in place uh, after a lead converts on an offer on your site that they get three to four more touches from you automatically based around what you want them to do with the next step in your sales process. Get a question on keyword research. Um, we talked through keyword research in more depth on our on the specific webinar we did. We did about 45 minutes just on the blogging topic. Um, again, so I'll be happy to send a link to our YouTube channel to that if you're interested. Um, but keyword research, if you really want to dive into the nitty gritty of it, uh, can be done through the keyword tool in Google AdWords. So you'd have to go to google.com slash AdWords, create an AdWords account, or if you already have a Google account, it will work. Uh, as well, which for example would be a Gmail account. Um, you can use that there. And then if you go into the tools, you'll see a keyword tool. And you can put in uh, some keyword ideas that you have. It'll kick back uh, some additional keywords based off of those. Uh, and it'll tell you search volumes and competitive scores in that arena as well. Uh, some of that data is starting to get blocked out, unfortunately. Uh, Google is pushing and pushing to technically protect as much privacy as they can, but in reality just control the game even more. Um, so they're starting to block some of that data out, but all that competitive score and, and um, data we looked at before all came from that specific Google keyword tool. Um, that can be a bit overwhelming, so if you're just starting with blogging, again, I encourage you to 
just sit down, talk to your customers, and, and think about the type of questions that they ask, ask them what they're interested in. If they were looking for a business like yours, what would they go to Google and search? Um, and that can be a great way to jumpstart that content process as well. Um, and would encourage you to grab a, grab a group of your team members um, and maybe once a quarter, if you're going to commit to that, that quarterly calendar we talked about, just throw out a ton of ideas for blog topics. Throw them out on a whiteboard, um, identify the keywords you're going after, and then narrow that list down to your, your top 15, uh, if you will, uh, and then really kind of hone in on that. So that's a, a kind of an easier way um, to do keyword research if it's not something you're familiar with. So. All right, well, we are at the end of the 45 minutes that we uh, set aside. I know everybody's got work to get back to, but uh, if you have any other questions, um, feel free to send me an email. Again, Matt at Q4 Launch. If you're interested in that marketing grader report to help you understand what next steps you can take to better improve your marketing, uh, please send me that email as well. I'd be happy to connect with you on that. I uh, want to thank everybody for joining us today. Uh, we will have a recording of today's webinar available if it's something you feel like a colleague or friend needs to hear. Uh, we'll make that available to you, uh, and you can send that on to them. And I will also follow up with uh, the email with everyone who registered and attended uh, with the spreadsheet that we talked about today. So thanks, everybody, for your time. We look forward to reconnecting with you soon. And uh, feel free to uh, jump on our blog, shoot me an email, uh, jump on our social media, and let us know what we can do to help you all out. Look forward to talking to you guys again soon. Have a great rest of your Thursday.